One of the Tampa Bay area's hidden gems sits at the north end of Pinellas County. Known for its Greek history and culture, Tarpon Springs is a must-see destination if you're new in town. But how did it become so Greek? Well, we talked to an expert. I am born and raised here in Tarpon Springs, first generation in Tarpon Springs. Michael John's family immigrated to the Tampa Bay area from Greece in the 1950s. By the time they had arrived, a strong Greek culture had developed in Tarpon Springs. But why specifically Tarpon Springs? In the early 1900s, late 1800s, I should say, is a gentleman by the name of John Cheney, an importer or exporter out of Europe came here via the Atlantic Railway. During his vacation in the Tarpon Springs area, Cheney headed out to the Gulf of Mexico, where he noticed something familiar. He made the assumption and the right idea that the Gulf of Mexico is very similar to the Mediterranean, and even the landline here in Tarpon Springs, being a peninsula, very similar to the Greek island. So Cheney saw a business opportunity lying right under the surface of the Gulf, sponges and he knew just the right people for the job. The immigration started with the Greeks coming to Tarpon Springs and developed the sponge industry because they had been doing it already for a thousand years. With the experience and equipment, Greek immigrants turned Tarpon Springs into the sponge capital of the world, and just in a few decades. But maybe you're thinking, why are sponges so popular in the first place? They use sponges a lot more in Europe, main reason being the older homes don't have showers. Everyone knows about the absorption of a natural sponge. It can't be met. The durability, two to three years. But the big thing in natural sponge is it has a flow-through system that doesn't allow bacteria to grow on its fibers. That's why in the early days, you used use natural sponges in surgery. The ancient Greeks figured all of this out about sponges, using them for cleaning, filtering water, and even padding in helmets. But sponging really got started on the Dodecanese Islands, and that name may sound familiar from Dodecanese Boulevard in Tarpon Springs. Dodeca is the number 12 in Greek, and Nisi means island. The early settlers and my family came from these 12 islands in Greece. On these islands, men made a living by trading sponges. Before any sort of suit was invented, Greeks would dive without clothes, simply holding their breath for a few minutes. They used stones to weigh them down, helping them get to the seafloor faster. Some of the most skilled divers could dive to depths of 100 feet and stay down there for up to five minutes. As the industry grew, technological advances were made, including the creation of a diving suit called Scaphandro by the Greeks. It was great because now divers could dive deeper and stay underwater a lot longer. However, what they didn't know about was the bends. Hundreds of men were left paralyzed after coming to the surface too quickly, and thousands more died. It got so bad that the Ottoman Empire banned the use of diving suits in the 1880s, and Greeks returned to skin diving. Just a few decades later, though, blights destroyed sponge beds throughout the Mediterranean, slowing down harvesting and trade. Two world wars would later complicate trade even further, bringing the industry to a near halt. Looking for work, the Greeks learned of Tarpon Springs and the vast sea of sponges just waiting to be harvested. So they packed up their equipment and headed west. Back in the early 1900s, harvesting sponges wasn't for the faint of heart. Boat crews would spend one, sometimes two months out at sea, and that's not even the hard part. Starting with the suit of the sponge that were used from the early 1900s to 1940 to 43 are the shoes. Made out of lead, leather, and wood, they will weigh 12 pounds a piece. The suit would be layered of two layers of canvas, one layer of rubber, being a onesie watertight, but not waterproof, that weighs 18 pounds. The copper and brass where the wing nuts are that connects the helmet weighs 18 pounds. And the helmet itself made out of copper, brass, and glass weighs 38 pounds. But wait, there's more. Before this man gets in the water, we had two additional 35 pound lead weights. This brings his total suit weight every time he goes to work of 172 pounds. The good news, diving equipment has drastically improved since then. Divers no longer have to wear those heavy suits made out of metal, and boats only harvest for a couple weeks before returning to shore. But the bad news, sponge harvesting is still an intense job, and the industry is rapidly changing in Tarpon Springs. Like many other industries, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find people willing to take the plunge. 
Every now and then you get this guy who'll come up to me and say, hey, I hear you can make $1,000 a week working on a sponge boat, and you can. Well, next thing you know, he gets on a sponge boat and he heads out to the Gulf of Mexico with two other Greek guys. This guy gets seasick, he starts sucking his thumb and asking for his mother. Well, guess what? We don't bring you home. You're going to stay out there and work. Eventually, you'll come back and I'll pay you your $500,000, but I'll never see you again. A familiar face at the sponge docks is Anastasios, or just Tazo for short. He's an expert at sponge harvesting, considering he's been doing it for 50 years. It takes a, uh, not anybody for this job. has to have a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge from what we do. I love it. The other way, I quit a long time ago. But even with fewer people, sponges are still coming in like this haul on Tazo's boat after an 11 day trip. On nearly every corner, you'll find Greek owned shops, many selling sponges of all shapes and sizes. For Michael John, it's a reminder of his heritage, which he's very proud of, and the place he calls home. We're a vibrant community. We're strong, uh, strong minded. It's like Europe without the Euro. Uh, not a big hurry, just the good quality of life that we have here. Do you ever have any questions about the Tampa Bay area or why things are the way they are? Well, I want to hear from you, so send over your questions. You can email me at mjones at 10tampabay.com or you can find me on Twitter at katiejonestv.